I'm going to show you how to double the site speed of your websites when you're using SiteGround. You don't have to pay for anything in this video. All the tools we're going to use are actually already included in your hosting package. So let's get started. Now let me say from the very onset of this video that this is not a sales pitch for SiteGround at all. It's mostly intended for people that already have SiteGround and want to make their websites load faster. Now the benefit of SiteGround is normally the tools to, that you would use to make your site just work faster will cost you hundreds of dollars per year, but not when you have SiteGround, it's already included. The thing is, most people don't even know what's included. SiteGround is like one of those nice resorts that you check into and as soon as you check in, you you need to like go and explore the resort to see everything that's included that's exactly what SiteGround's like there's so much included and if you're using SiteGround you're gonna learn about it now of course if you don't have SiteGround you might want to watch this video and then decide if you like what they include for free inside their packages I'll have a link down below it'll take you to SiteGround you'll get 70% off your hosting plan and I include a training course package that's $499 I include that for free to help people get the most out of SiteGround and building their website just click on the link down below and you'll have all that information there now before we get too much into it I want to dispel some of the site speed myths around having a website the first myth is that your site speed is not going to lower the rankings of your website in Google, at least not how you think it's going to. Listen, there's many more important ranking factors and site speed is just the least important of all of them. What's really happening is slow site speed produces a bad user experience. A bad user experience leads to an increased bounce rate. That's how soon someone leaves your website when they go to your website and that is an important ranking factor. So a slow website doesn't affect your rankings the way you think. It's really what leads to bounce rate. How many times have you gone to a website and you're there, it's been four or five, six seconds, it's not loading the information you want and you know on Google there's nine other listings on that page. What do you do? You bounce off the website, you click back and that is the ranking factor that is hurting your rankings. So what we're really trying to do is optimize your website for user experience, not for Google. The second myth is that the speed of your website is being lowered by the page builder that you chose to use or the theme that you chose to use to build your website. Well, slightly, but it's not as big of a factor as people would have you to believe. It's really mostly just good marketing. All right, now that we got those myths out of the way, it's time to start optimizing your website and going over the five pillars of site speed. Now, the first pillar of site speed is going to be getting good web hosting. Now, the good thing is, is you're using SiteGround, which is a fantastic web host. So this pillar is more intended for people that are using low budget hosting or free hosting because you end up getting what you pay for when it comes to hosting. Now, if you're not using SiteGround, I remember I have a link down below that will take 70% off and I also include a course bonus. So SiteGround has three plans. You're going to want to be on this Grow Big plan or the Go Geek plan. I know it's tempting to save $2 a month by just getting the startup plan, but these other two plans include additional performance options that are just not available in the startup plan. So if you are on the startup plan, you could follow along in this video, but you might want to consider contacting SiteGround and upgrading to the Grow Big plan. Now, when you install WordPress on SiteGround, they're going to include a plugin called SG Optimizer. Here I am on a WordPress installation. I'll click on plugins and you can see it's right here, SG Optimizer. Now, when you have this activated, there's going to be a new option here that says SG Optimizer and here's all the settings for this plugin. The second pillar of site speed is to optimize your images. As you start building out your WordPress website, you're going to want to upload images. 
Now the problem with that is the images tend to be a lot higher quality than you need, which leads to very large file sizes. So every time someone visits your website, they have to download large images. So you're going to get some great performance gains by optimizing those images. Now typically you have to pay for a monthly service to optimize the images, but not if you have SiteGround. It's included in the SG Optimizer plugin. So here we are at the plugins settings. The very last option here says image optimizations. We'll go ahead and click on that and there's some settings here that we might want to enable. So the first one is to optimize new images as they're uploaded to your website you're going to want to enable this option. So what this means is the next time you upload an image, SG Optimizer is just going to take care of it for you. The next option is if you have already uploaded images, you can click on this button right here and it will go back and optimize all of the images in your media library for you. And that's all there is to optimizing your images. The third pillar of site speed is to use a content delivery network. Here I am logged into SiteGround and I'm going to click right here where it says websites and then I'll click right here where it says site tools and then I'll click where it says speed and then I'll click right here where it says Cloudflare and this is where we can enable the Cloudflare integration with SiteGround. Now when you enable Cloudflare what happens is some of the assets on your website are going to be pushed to Cloudflare's network of servers around the globe. Now what that means is if someone on the other side of the globe visits your website, the images and a lot of those big large assets related to your website in order for it to load will actually load from a local server to them geographically. What this is going to do is drastically improve the load time and the site speed that visitors will have on site of your website. Now Cloudflare has a basic plan that is free. They also have a premium plan. I have been using Cloudflare for at least five years and I've never used anything but the basic plan it's going to be more than what you need and you'll see a huge speed improvement on your website so I'm going to scroll down and here are the three steps to getting this working on our website so let's go ahead and click the setup button in this step you can create a new Cloudflare account or you can click right here where it says connect existing and log into your existing Cloudflare account. So since I already have a Cloudflare account, I'll log in using my existing account. But for you, if you don't have an account, go ahead and create a new one. Great, I've logged into my account and you have created a new account. So the next step is to choose your domain name here that you want to connect into Cloudflare. And then you'll want to click on activate free in order to connect your website to Cloudflare. Now down here you can also see some Cloudflare settings that you'll be able to use on your website. The fourth pillar of site speed is using caching and what caching is is it's going to create a static copy of your website so when people view your website less activities have to go on behind the scenes that might slow down the visitor seeing your website. I know that's kind of a complicated explanation. Just understand that if you're using WordPress, you need to be using some form of caching. Now the huge benefit of using SiteGround is they do a lot of this caching transparently behind the scenes on the server hosting account. They just do it for you, but you have to actually turn it on. So here I am logged into the SiteGround control panel. So you can just click where it says speed and then there's this new option here that says caching. We'll want to go ahead and click on that. And this is where we're going to enable two different types of caching on your website. So the first is where it says static cache and you're going to see a list of the websites you have connected to SiteGround and all you have to do is toggle it on just by going like that and now your cache is toggled on. There's a second type of caching here called memcached. Let's click on that and this is a type of caching that will apply to your entire hosting account. We'll go ahead and click right here to toggle this on as well. Now, both of these caching mechanisms have a way for you to empty the cache. And the way you could do it if you're logged into SiteGround is this little broom that's off to the right here and it says flush cache. You can click this to flush memcached. And when you are on the static cache, there's also the option there to flush the cache right there. Now, we also have to enable some options here 
on your website in the SG Optimizer plugin. The first tab is Super Cacher Settings. We're going to want to toggle this right here where it says Dynamic Caching. And then we're going to want to toggle this right here where it says memcached like that. Now there's some additional options for dynamic caching that you may want to be aware of. First option is right here where you can purge the cache and empty it. There's also going to be an option in your admin bar at the top to empty the cache. Next is automatic cache purge. You're going to want to leave this enabled. The main options that you want to be aware of is right here where it says excluding URLs. Depending on the type of website you have, there may be certain parts of your website that you can't include caching on because it will cause an issue. You see this typically with e-commerce based websites. This is because those types of websites have a lot of dynamic options on it and caching just is not going to work right. So this is where you're going to put the URLs to the pages that you want to exclude from caching. All you have to do is enter the URL here and then click where it says exclude to add it to the exclusion list. And now your site's going to be fully cached. The last pillar of site speed is going to be additional performance optimizations. Now the SG Optimizer plugin is going to give you some various options with that as well. So the first one would be lazy loading images. What this means is when a visitor loads your page, it will not show them or it will not load an image until they scroll to the part of the page where that image is supposed to be. This is going to make your website load faster and feel a lot faster to your website visitors. So to enable that, we will click right here where it says image optimization. And here's the option that says lazy load images. We will toggle that on. It gives us some additional options here if we want to lazy load. Those would include gravatars, thumbnails, responsive images, widgets, and lazy loading on mobile devices. So you can toggle these on as you want. I like lazy loading gravatars and thumbnails for sure. The rest are optional to you. If there's some problem that's being caused by lazy loading, you can exclude certain parts of your website from lazy loading. You would just put the CSS class to those elements. It's a little bit technical. You would do that right here and then click on exclude. Now there's additional optimizations. Right here's an option for environment optimizations. You're going to want to scroll down and make sure gzip compression is toggled on. Lastly, front end optimizations right here. Now these could be a little bit tricky and you can sometimes get yourself into a little bit of trouble. So I recommend enabling them one by one, then verifying that it has not caused any strange behavior on your website. Now you should be pretty safe toggling on minify the HTML output. You should also be safe enabling all the various minify options. So here's one to minify JavaScript files. Here's one to minify CSS files. Now the defer render blocking JavaScript, this could cause issues. And when you go to enable this, you're going to get a warning right here and you can confirm whether you want that to activate or not. And so this is one where you're definitely going to want to verify on the front end whether or not it's caused an issue. Here is another option to combine CSS files, and this could cause some issues as well. As you can see, it's not triggering a warning message, but just know that this can cause problems as well sometimes. Next, we have optimized loading of Google fonts. That is harmless. Let's turn that on. Next is remove query strings from static resources. This has caused issues for me in the past, so just be careful. This is an option that you see cause a problem when a plugin or theme off author releases a new update and then things start getting wonky on your website. Last is disable emojis. This does not mean that emojis are not going to work on your website. It just means that it will be loaded in a more optimal way. Now I'm going to take a quick look at the front end of my website to make sure there's no visible problems. And then I'm going to do a quick speed test. So here's the website and so far it's looking fine. My images are loading right. These little icons are showing. That's typically what you would see an issue with if there was any problems that you're running into. Uh, the spacing is correct. 
Sometimes these might overlap if there was an issue as well. Everything is looking perfect, as a matter of fact. This is looking really good. Okay, so I'm gonna go to gtmetrics.com and I'll go ahead and paste in the URL to the website with a trailing backslash. I'll click right here where it says test your site. It just takes a moment and what it's gonna do is download your website and it's gonna give you some data. It's gonna let you know how long it took to load. It's going to tell you how many requests were there and it's going to come up with some arbitrary score. Now, I recommend don't put too much weight into this score. As you can see, the scores are quite high. An A and a B here with a very quick load time of 1.2 seconds, a page size of under a megabyte and only 32 requests. This is a website using Elementor. Now, I always say don't put too much weight into these scores here. What really matters is is how your website feels when someone comes onto your website. But you can see from this test that the site is loading extremely fast, which is really good for a site with all of these images. Well, there you have it. That's how you can make your websites using SiteGround load incredibly fast and I hope you saw as well the tremendous value that you get from SiteGround. Normally you would have to pay hundreds of dollars per year to get plugins that do everything that they just include for you already with the service that you have with them. This is one of the reasons why I recommend using SiteGround. It's because of all these extra goodies that they include for you and you don't have to go buy them and they're officially supported by your web host SiteGround. If you don't have SiteGround, consider using the link that I have down below or wpcrafter.com slash SiteGround. If you did order SiteGround, I include a course bonus to go with it. That's gonna help you get the most out of building a website and the most out of SiteGround. Hey, if you found some value in this video and I sure hope you did, consider giving this a thumbs up up and sharing it with a friend and if you have any questions at all I encourage you to ask in the comment section down below I'd love to answer your question and help you in any way that I can hey thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video